Greetings to my Harvest LA family. As of this week, we have completed 34 Sunday worship services virtually. We talk about these times as being unprecedented, but who or what sets precedence? It's interesting to reflect on how our lives might have changed temporarily or permanently in terms of our relations with God, with our immediate and intermediate, intermediate um, communities, and the rest of the world. Today, the sharing is for Friday, November 6th, and the reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, and I will be reading from the NLT version. The Hope of the Resurrection and now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then, we will be with the Lord forever. So, encourage each other with these words. Let's pray. Dear God, please be present in each of our lives. We all need you and are crying out to you. Thank you for the hope of resurrection and really just hope in general. Thank you that we can always depend and trust in your steadfast love. We're lifting all families to you. May your comfort and perfect peace be instilled in all of us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I want to share two things that this passage speaks to me today. The first is the message of hope. Some of the hope we can connect to include the hope of resurrection of the believers who have died, hope for those who suffer the love, the loss of loved ones, and the fact that there is and will be resurrection, hope in the second coming, of when Christ returns, and hope in meeting our Lord, hope in reuniting with our loved ones, and hope in being with the Lord forever. And Paul ends this passage in verse 18 that we are to encourage each other with these words. And I pray that these words indeed bring encouragement. Personally, I've been feeling a little depressed. I mean, there's the ongoing pandemic, but the world goes on. We still get earthquakes and brush fires here in California. Hurricanes are still sweeping across the Atlantic and the Gulf. I mean, people lost lives, lost loved ones, forced to evacuate and abandon their homes. Families and businesses are suffering. Churches and communities are hurting, ours included. I mean, very much so. Our only hope has always been and will always be in the glory he will reveal to us later. And this brings to me to my second point. This awareness of the end drives our life today. How we deal with troubles and trials, how we do ministry, how we evangelize, how we study and work how we protect the environment, and how we handle issues like racial and gender inequalities. I mean, basically everything, right? So prior to verse 13, in the first 12 verses of 1 Thessalonians, Paul is encouraging them to live a life more pleasing to God, to control one's body, to live in holiness and honor, to love one another. And after this passage in chapter 5, Paul talks about how the second coming will happen unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. This means that because of this end, we have to prepare ourselves to live 
our lives pleasing to the Lord. But preparing for eternity is not just about living right. In verse 70, in verse 17, we will be with the Lord forever. How well do you know your Lord? Are you excited to be spending forever with him? Reflect on and prepare for that. Let's pray. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Bye, everyone. I hope to see you guys again later. Bye.